Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Did you come in the morning back to the car? Was going to leave for work or some other stuff and you couldn't start the vehicle? Was the battery completely dead when you turned? The starter didn't even move or did it start clicking? In this case you are probably scratching your head. Where is your problem? And you are thinking, hey, I have either bad battery which is right here or maybe i have a bad alternator which is not recharging the battery so what shall i do and in this case most likely it is your battery and i will show you why well, this is a simple 2000 corolla with how many miles Huh? 1930098. So first of all, if you have a Toyota like this and your alternator will be bad, you will see the alternator or charging light, the warning light on. So I will put it on and we will zoom on it. What light will be on? So do you see the oil symbol? Then is the seat belt and there is that battery symbol right in the middle. Well, if you will start up the vehicle or keep driving and your alternator was bad, it will show. So let's start up and we will see if it will go off or not. The vehicle really nicely started and of course, because the alternator is not at fault, it's not faulty, there is a not warning light display so we have it nicely running nicely idling and all of us we assume that the alternator is fine will you not say if you observe the belt is nicely rotating the alternator and we are expecting that it's working correctly thanks to the system which is incorporated in the vehicle and which will be shown the warning will be shown in the instrument cluster how can I without any tools whatsoever check if the alternator is working well many YouTube magicians will show you videos that they will completely disconnect the battery while the vehicle is running and doing so they will disconnect both of these terminals and they will say well if it's disconnected and the engine doesn't die that means the alternator is providing all the consumers like a ignition coils, spark plugs, computer and so on it's, it's provided by the current, the electricity so alternator is fine I don't recommend you doing that because you are risking destroying those electronic consumers I will respectfully ask you please don't remove these while the engine is running the risk of damaging the engine computer or other components it's way too high I will never do that I think everybody who owns the vehicle is capable to invest 10 or 20 bucks in the cheapest simplest multimeter or voltmeter whatever you call it to confirm that the alternator is providing the voltage and current to the whole system and also because the battery is being connected that it's charging the battery let me show you what I mean you will put it on volts on the V right here and then you will touch the terminals while the engine is running and you will read you will see what voltage will be provided and we are expecting somewhere between 13.5 volts all the way up to 15 but it has to stay below 15 otherwise it will be 
overcharging. So, black to the negative, red to the positive. And let's see what we will see here. And it's the alternator, it's doing 14.32, 14.27 it, it's alternating slightly within that range so this is absolutely perfectly working and we know the alternator is fine and there's no problem in it and for answering the dilemma is it bad battery or bad alternator well that will be the answer of course things are not so simple and it's getting more complicated. The battery could be still completely fine and the reason you couldn't start a vehicle in the morning was because you left one of the lights on and you just drained it overnight and the battery is totally fine. Or there is, for example, incorrectly installed aftermarket radio and they didn't hook it right the radio is drawing small amount of current and that will within a couple of days completely drain even perfectly fine battery so we will go right now and test the battery this one is guys almost four years it's a three and like nine months so it's getting there, so we will test it. The best way to test it is to remove the terminals and test the battery uh, just directly to the battery terminals, but it's fine. We have 12.66 volts after it was running, which will be fine. These are the CCA. It has 550 CCAs. Let's see what's the results. State of health 74%, state of charge 98%, 12.66 volts, 505 amp, internal resistance 6.32 milliohms. It says good battery. So now what are we will going to do? It says the battery is good, we know the alternator is good, what shall we do? And to get this final answer I will back, bring back this uh, voltmeter and I will have 10 millimeter wrench here and I will disconnect the negative terminal completely from the battery. Can I put it here? Hopefully. I'm trying not to get in front of you. Now, when this will be fully disconnected, I will switch my settings for amps on this and we will be measuring current which is happening between the battery and the vehicle. So I changed here my connections. I'm on the amps. This is 20 amp protected circuit. Uh, I will clamp it for just easy visibility without kicking the tripod and so on. And let's see guys, this is a really strong clamp. Let's see what our reading will be. And it should be max 0 0.05 amps, which will be 50 milliamps. I will connect it to the other negative and let's observe it what's the best angle for you so right now immediately if it was if the vehicle was drawing so much for extended period of time that will be too much but it immediately changed where, why there was that spike? Well, because when you connect the terminals, the computer will wake up and so on. There is more stuff which will immediately wake up and uh, start consuming. But by its design, it's supposed to go to the sleep. And this is, guys, what happened. We are reading 0, 0.0 and it's either 40 or 39. 
37, 40. And I'm not sure if I mention it, but maximum allowed draw when the vehicle sits into your garage, it's 50, which is 0 0.050. And as you can see, we are well below that. This is fantastic. That confirms that there's no problem with the radio, which is hooked incorrectly or something like that. So as you can see, sometimes it's more complicated than we will expect and it needs correct diagnosis. Now, considering what we discussed here, how this vehicle is being used, how the battery is old, I will not believe with tester anymore. I also check the battery which belongs in this vehicle. They're supposed to be bigger size. You can see it on the tray. So I will go ahead, buy him brand new battery, which is bigger size and it's stronger. CCAs, I will get him 650. The battery will be bigger and will also the charge, the amperage which will be stored and it will be bigger than the one which is right here and it's getting old. The tester for some reason thinks it's in the good health but it's not possible obviously. If you park your vehicle and you don't have any excessive current draw your vehicle should start perfectly after months without any problems. And I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, please give it a thumb up and stay tuned. Be subscribed. I have way more videos coming your way soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day, my friend. Look at this monster. That will work for him way better, don't you think? Let's go put his baby in. Who says size doesn't matter? Must be crazy. It does matter. In America, go big or go home.